Welcome to Alabama AgCast, a weekly conversation about news and issues affecting Alabama farmers and forest landowners. Alabama AgCast is produced by the Alabama Farmers Federation. Hello and welcome to this week's Alabama AgCast. I'm your host, Mike Moody. In the AgCast studio today, we've got Colton Christian. Colton is the director of poultry, or poultry division director. Uh, and uh, Colton, how are you doing today? Doing good, Mike. Appreciate the opportunity to be on and talk a little poultry with you today. All right. Yeah, we are talking poultry, but not not in the really good way, in a way that uh, it's it's kind of a... Uh, not a red flag, but we just want to make people aware of what's going on out there. And uh, we are recording this during the winter, uh, and and that's a time that that people understand getting the flu and uh, some sicknesses. But there's also an avian flu, an avian influenza. Uh, it's been around for many years and and uh, continues to be a threat across the country. Uh, Colton, just to get started, how has this virus gotten to this point? Well, Mike, this is a topic that certainly will cause some stress and some. Uh, flashbacks of some bad times because unless this uh, virus hits you personally it's not really uh, understood as much but this is the topic that causes a lot of stress and uneasiness especially around this time of year like you said with with the flu historically <clears throat> this variant um, and, and bird flu has of course very different variants but one of the most common uh, knowledge on is the h5n1 which we'll talk about more in here in just a second but it uh, this uh, virus dates back to the late 1800s where it was first discovered. And of course, back then, there's not near as much poultry or was not near as much poultry back then as there is now. So it wasn't as understood. And uh, it wasn't as understood until about the 1950s when more birds started being uh, produced. And so a lot smarter people than me got together and decided, well, we need to find out more about what's going on here while we're having these birds to die. And so as we go into the late 90s, that is when the H5N1 variant was first discovered. Um, and this variant is, of course, was the strongest at the time, causing the most destruction, which is the one that's still hanging around today and then branching off from there and uh, wreaking havoc across the world, not near, not here in just the U.S. But we had the worst uh, hit of it in 2015. That's when it first really hit Alabama, hit it close to home. Um, hit commercially there and so when you branch out from that you have a lot of backyard producers you have a lot of uh, backyard chickens you have mm -hmm. uh, game game birds and commercial operations and then you have the integrators which are primarily located in the northeast part of the state and the southeast part of the state so when you branch out from there there's a lot of ground covered and then when you mix in the wild migratory birds that certainly causes an issue so historically it's always been a problem uh, but as we continue to per, uh, produce more poultry in the state with the increased risk of wild birds, that's where we are today. And um, hopefully we can uh, put a hamper on it, but it hasn't, hasn't seemed to be going away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you were saying all the variations of, of operations that there are, the backyard chickens uh, all the way to integrators. Uh, in um, As far as avian influenza, what kind of operations are most at risk? Well, Mike, if you have birds of any kind, you're at risk, and you might be at risk and not even know it. And what I mean by that is, is once a commercial operation is deemed positive for avian flu, and commercial <coughs> meaning any birds that are being sold uh, from that farm, um, that farm is then under quarantine, and a 6.2 mile circle is drawn around that farm, with the farm being the center. So you may be directly affected by um, this, even though your birds may not be positive, but because you are within that 6.2 mile radius, you have to be cleared by the state in order for commerce to commence. So there's a series of testing that, that has to be done, whether you're a backyard producer or whether you're a fully integrated uh, producer, um, you have to be cleared, and that's through uh, weeks of testing um, and basically what happens is, is uh, members from the uh, state health department will come in. They will test all known birds within that radius. And once those are clear, uh, then you get the thumbs up and then commerce can commence. But until that time, everybody within that 6.2 mile radius is at risk. And if you have birds in general, 
whether that be your backyard laying hens, whether you have a commercial game bird operation, or whether you're a, a contract grower, you're at risk no matter where you are, not only in Alabama, but in the country. Mm -hmm. Well, the, um, there's a lot of folks that have these little hobby farms that, that, that have this small hen houses that, that they uh, put birds in. So uh, I'm sure our integrators, our larger producers are probably well aware of this, but for those that might not be, that might be new into the, into the process, what are some of the signs uh, that, that we need to look for for avian influenza? Well, think of it just like you would if you get a flu. That's kind of the same signs that you would see in birds. Just uh, It's a, obviously a respiratory <laughs> issue, so wheezing, sneezing, uh, coughing. Uh, just think of the same symptoms you would have. Uh, then up to the point where you just have birds uh, go out there one day and they're, they're starting to die uh, very rapidly. I mean, at that point, uh, it's, it's too far in the game. But when you, if you notice any respiratory issues, lethargy, um, decreased appetite, things like that. Those are things to be aware of, to be looking for. And if you do have any of those issues that you're seeing, you know, obviously if you have a client-patient relationship with your veterinarian, have that conversation. But um, if you're just out um, in the countryside and you see uh, dead buzzards, uh, any type of dead fowl, um, you can contact the, the state um, Department of Agriculture. They have a poultry unit there that's very well trained to uh, equip with these issues, you can also call your uh, national resource uh, office and, and they can uh, take care of it as well. But um, signs, just think of it just like a simple flu that we have, and uh, but they quickly start to die soon, soon thereafter. So you have to be very proactive. There is no, there is no cure. Uh, there is no approved vaccine uh, here in the U.S. Uh, so once, once that is deemed to be an issue, the entire farm has to be uh, eradicated and, and done so in such a way that hopefully containment does not leave that farm. Well, one thing you said that I, I, I think that we push this all the time is that a, a good relationship with your vet is, a veterinarian is, is key in a lot of these things because there are always new issues coming out, new, you know, new, they're not always, but when things come out, when things are made available, uh, the, the, uh, producer themselves may not know about it, but to keep a good relationship with your vet, regardless of what kind of animal you're, you know, you're trying to produce, uh, is I think a very important part. So that's a great point that you made that they need to consult with their veterinarian uh, first. Um, so as far as Alabama, uh, have there been any recent outbreaks? Unfortunately, Mike, there has. Uh, we've had our fair share um, ending of 2023 uh, <clears throat> than what we've had since 2015. We kind of got hit there with a uh, left and a right hook uh, there at the end of 2023 leading into uh, November. Um, so at the end of October, had our first uh, case in Chilton County in a commercial uh, game bird operation. Uh, upwards of close to 300,000 birds there were affected, mm -hmm. um, had to be depopulated. Um, a, a huge undertaking and right back to back was the the other case in a uh, commercial operation was a pullet hen farm up in Marshall County. And that was um, a very unfortunate, uh, especially being in the uh, com commercial poultry business, because that not only affects that producer, but it affects producers down the line. Yeah, anyway, it all ties line. in. So very unfortunate, but I will say that uh, it was handled in about the best way that it could be handled. Uh, State Department did a really good job of uh, identifying and containing and uh, depopulating and working with all the people involved in that. And then the last case we had uh, latest was um, going into uh, 2024. It was an issue in uh, Etowah County in a, a backyard flock. It was not considered commercial. So if they're not considered commercial, you do not have to do any testing outside of that farm. The farm just has to be depopulated. So, of course, there's constantly issues with uh, buzzards and wild birds uh, coming up with confirmed cases, but those are the three cases that we have had known in terms of commercial or backyard production so far. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's good information for people to have to be on the lookout, check your uh, check your flock and, and make sure that they're uh, not exhibiting these signs and uh, and then to be able to have that relationship with your veterinarian to 
uh, keep track of what's going on. Now, you said earlier, you kind of it was kind of a spoiler alert. There's no cure, uh, just like the regular flu. Uh, but is there anything being done to help combat the virus for folks? Yeah, Mike, let me back up just a little bit and say that we typically do not see an issue in Alabama as early as we did this past uh, issue in 2023. Typically, we don't see these issues until January. Uh, that's when the migratory birds, so just think of when migratory birds migrate, that's when you have heightened uh, precautions. So uh, we really weren't, uh, we were really caught off guard, weren't prepared for uh, the early cases that we have had. Uh, so generally your smaller ducks, like your teal, they, they migrate first. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the first wave that comes in. And then your bigger ducks, your bigger puddle ducks, they come in with another wave. So we've uh, been very fortunate to be able to withstand um, what we've already uh, taken a hit on. But another thing to be mindful of is the birds have to go back at some point. And that'll be coming up here in the next few months. Uh, in the March and April, all the birds migrating back up uh, to Canada where they're going to um, be for the summer. And so we're not done out of the out of the woods just yet. Uh, so there are still opportunities out there and they're still very serious. And so uh, taking biosecurity measures and things like that. Uh, I always say, you know, as much insurance as you can take with you, take with you. So if you're a, a backyard producer or whether you're a um, contract grower, when you go to the the local co-op, when you go to a gathering where a lot of poultry farmers may be, take you a can of disinfectant and spray your boots uh, before you get out of the truck. When you get back in the truck, just be extra precautious. Uh, anybody that is trained to work on your farm, exercise those precautions as well. But, you know, things that are being done to kind of help this is in those high traffic areas where poultry producers might be. Um, Alpha, as well as uh, Extension and Alabama Poultry and Egg, have partnered together to uh, equip all the Extension offices and especially these high risk areas of the state uh, with biosecurity mats that are in place. So when uh, pr producers come into an Extension office, they walk through a disinfecting bath, and that'll help alleviate mm -hmm. a lot of these issues, especially in these high traffic. Uh, areas of northeast Alabama and southeast Alabama. And so um, those are the kind of things that are being done just in terms of just being mindful that we're not out of the woodwork yet and hitting hitting these uh, high traffic areas with as much biosecurity as we can. Uh, always be mindful of, of those issues. Wow, a lot of good information, uh, Colton. Thank you so much for well, keeping track of all of this and then letting our listeners know. So we'll keep track with you. And if there are any new information, any more, uh, any new things we need to think about, think about, we'll, we'll bring you back on. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Mike. Have a good one.